Same thing we do every day, Pinky. Try and take over the world. I don't know, can you? Which one is that? Oh, a stupid song. It's a wonderful song. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Please have a seat, sir. Uh, we can start out if you take attendance. things that we talked about right uh, right at the very end. We're going to kind of recover that just to uh, kind of as a little refresher so we can all remember exactly what it was we were talking about. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, the little like next button thing on my smart board is not working. Everything else on the smart board works, but that little clicking to the next box thing isn't working, so um, we'll have to just put another go in. Uh, all right. So we talked about phrases and clauses, and we talked about yes. What are we supposed to do? Break down what's on the board. Oh. Uh, yes. If you, if you didn't bring your notebook, you should bring your notebook every day in class. I shouldn't have to be telling you guys down. Go get it. What are we bringing it every day? Oh, we supposed to be writing this? No. Uh, we already did. We already did this on Tuesday. Unless you weren't here, you shouldn't have to come into them. So phrases are multi-purpose. They uh, their basic function is to add more information. Uh, but in doing so, they can act as other parts of speech. For example, there are noun phrases, which are phrases which act as nouns. Uh, and in this case, the subject of a sentence. For example, a 98-year-old lady was the champion of the race. Here we have a phrase, 98-year-old lady. It talks about, it goes on from there. So it is a phrase, but it acts as the noun. In other situations, we have verbal phrases. Verbal phrases include the main verb of a sentence, and the words that help modify it. Really quickly, since we're talking about phrases, and since Connor wasn't here, can anybody tell Connor what a phrase is? Can anybody look, through their note, look at their notes at the beginning of the notes, tell Connor what a phrase is? Can you remember what a phrase is? No, what's a phrase? Um, it's to add more information, but um, it's a basic function. The basic, the basic function is to add more information, but in doing so, they can act as other purposes. Okay, so we have that part, which is right here. But how do we tell if something is a phrase? What makes up a phrase? Okay. One more time. Can we do one more time? Just a little bit louder. A small group of words lacking a subject, a predicate, or both. That is the definition of a phrase. A small group of words lacking a subject, a predicate, or both. Oh, what? Oh, no. Oh. No, we're right here. I was trying to do something and it was not going to let me do it. That's okay. Alright, so that's what a phrase is. A phrase is a group of words that is lacking either a subject, a predicate, or both. And then we have different types of phrases. We have noun phrases, we have verbal phrases, 
verbal phrases can also act as nouns. Those are so in this case, verbal phrases can act as nouns. Running uh, in all running in races of all sorts is something that Matilda would always volunteer to do. Now, if this was not underlined and I asked you guys what the main verb of this sentence is, what do you guys think it is? What's the main verb of this sentence? Running in races of all sorts is something that Matilda would always volunteer to do. What's the main verb of this sentence? Just. Running is not the main verb. Running is part of a verbal phrase that's actually used as a noun. So what do we think the main verb is? Lauren? What is it? Is. Is is correct. Is is the main verb. But when you think about verbs, right, you think about action words. So you see the word running and you're like, well, that's a verb. It's got to be running. But in verbal phrases, it can be a little bit confusing as to what the main verb is. So just please pay attention to that. But we will talk more about these. We're gonna get into these in depth in a little bit. Adjective phrases. Adjective phrases help modify nouns. It's a phrase that helps modify nouns. So in this case we have our example uh, at the end of the marathon, Matilda picks up her shoes, worn rugged from the long track. We know that adjectives modify nouns. So what noun does the phrase worn rugged from the long track modify? What noun does that modify? Kendall? Shoes. Just shoes. It modifies shoes. What was worn rugged? The shoes were. So we add that phrase at the end to talk a little bit more about the shoes so that we can help understand the shoes. And then the last one. Adverb phrases. Just like adjective phrases modify nouns, adverb phrases help us modify verbs. So we have in here, uh, one time Matilda ran through five states. Through five states is an adverb phrase. It helps modify a verb. What's the verb that it modifies? What verb does through five states modify? What's the verb in the sentence, Patrick? Ran. Correct. Through five states modifies ran. It tells us how she ran or where she ran. All right, so that's our catch-up information. That's what we talked about on Tuesday. Now we're going to start moving into some new stuff. We've talked a lot about phrases. Anybody want to guess what we're going to talk about next? What is, I'm hearing group mumblings. What are we talking about next? Claws. Anybody want to say it with some confidence? Clauses. Clauses. We are moving on to clauses. So what is a clause? What is a clause? And I don't mean Santa or Mrs. What is a clause? A clause, like a phrase, is a group of words. The difference is the clause has both a subject and a predicate. A clause has both a subject and a predicate. Is it a sentence? A sentence is a type of clause. But a clause is not a type of sentence. Yes, exactly. Like a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. A clause. A sentence is a clause, because a sentence has a subject and a predicate, and it can stand alone. But not all clauses are sentences. Okay. Does everybody have this definition down? No. Everybody have it memorized then? Uh, no. Yeah. no, I give it up. Oh, I can see it there. Black. Yeah. 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 
Alright. Moving on. So now we have some examples. We have some examples of clauses. I'm pretty sure everybody can pull a star. Uh, let's see, where do I want to start? Come on, I think I have to go left. I think it's like the last Oh, God. Jada. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I Alright, nice. okay, pull your star across and then read it out loud for everybody here. He clean. He clean. It's a clause. It has a subject and a predicate. Great. Okay, I'm just Thank you for quietly waiting. Ready to call on you. <coughs> Read it out loud. What does it say? It was extremely deadly. It was extremely deadly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ever since I met him. <laughs> Subjects and predicates. So let's look at our very top one. When a fluffy gray kitten ran, what is the subject of this clause? What is the subject of the clause? Who or what is the sentence about? Child. Fluffy gray kitten, or more specifically, just kitten. What did the kitten do? What is the verb in this sentence? Ethan. Ram. Correct. We have our kitten and ram. We have our subject and we have a predicate. 
Uh, our next one, ever since I met him, what is the subject of this sentence? Lindsay. Yeah. No. No. No, him is the direct object. What is, oh, who or what is the sentence about? I. I, it's about I. I is the subject. And what did I do? No. Just met. Met is our verb. So we have just our verb, but more specifically in the, for the full predicate, it would be met him. When we want just the verb, it would be met. He cleaned. This is a pretty simple one. What is the subject of he cleaned? He cleaned. What is the subject of he cleaned? Lauren, what's the, sub what's the subject of he cleaned? He. What is the verb? What is the verb, Emily? Cleaned. Cleaned. While we were eating, what is the subject of while we were eating, Mia? What is the subject of while we were eating? Eating. No, the subject. Who or what is the sentence about, Alia? We. We. It's about we. Mia, what were we doing? What is the verb? Eating. Eating. There we go. We were eating. Eating is a verb. Because I left. What is the subject? I. I. And what did I do? Eat it. Left. Left. Correct. Uh, it was extremely deadly. What is the subject of that sentence? Kendall. It. It. And what did it do? What is the verb of that sentence? It was extremely deadly. What is the verb of that sentence, Patrick? Deadly. No. No. Oh, wait, wait. Got it. Esther, what is it? Was. Was. Look at the word deadly. What does deadly end with? L-Y. L-Y. What kind of words end with L-Y? Conjunction. 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 No. Adverse. Adverse. Adverse end with L-Y. So, deadly has to be an adverb. What about extremely? What does it end with? L-Y. So, what kind of word is extremely? Adverb. An adverb. So if this is an adverb, and this is an adverb, and this is the subject, the only thing left for your verb is was. Very simple. Uh, because you may be going, what is the subject of that? Who or what is the sub that sentence about? Because you may be going. Emily. Uh, you. You. It is about you. And what is the verb? Actually, we have a verb phrase in this. The verb. Go. May be going is our verb phrase. Uh, even though I ate, even though I ate, what is the? Even though I ate, what is the subject? I. I. And what did I do? Brandon, what did I do? Uh, huh? Even though I ate, what is eight? Correct. Eight is the verb. Uh, last one, no matter how hard I try, what is the subject? Lexi, what's the subject? I. I. And what did I do, Jada? Tried. Tried is the verb. All right, last one, unless you go to sleep, which I think just sounds way better if you say it like this. <coughs> unless you go to sleep. I get it. Maybe, unless you go to sleep. <laughs> Emily, what is the subject? You. You. And what is the verb, Ian? Sleep. Sleep. Actually, think where it's go. What do you do as you go? You go, where do you go? You go to sleep. Go is the verb. All right, so we see that with clauses, you have to have a subject and a predicate. There has to be a subject and a verb, right? There has to be something going on there. Now, there are two main types of clauses. This is definitely something you want to write down. There are two main types of clauses. There are two main types of clauses. There are Mr. Clause and Mrs. Clause. They're independent and dependent clauses. Independent clauses, as you see our little stick figure here, independent clauses can stand alone as a complete sentence. While dependent clauses, you can see the little person holding the baby. A dependent clause. All important information. Dependent clauses need a little help from their friends. They need some help from their friends. 
So you have like a little baby being held by an adult. I can tell you right now, uh, these are probably no more better exemplified than in uh, the, di the differences between my son and my daughter. My son is an independent clause, right? He can stand up on his own. He can walk on his own. Uh, he's basic. He's almost at the stage where he's running. Uh, if he falls down, he can pick himself back up. He doesn't need any assistance, whether he's got <coughs> shoes on or no shoes on, slippery pajama pants, you know, the little footy pajamas that don't have the rubber stuff on the bottom. The belt and just slides all over the floor. He can still walk. He goes nuts. He's completely independent when it comes to walking. He can go all over the place. My daughter hasn't quite mastered walking yet. She's getting there. She's getting close. She hasn't quite mastered it yet. But she's more dependent. She needs someone to hold her hand when she walks. She needs someone to rely on. She has to have an independent clause that she can rely on in order to stand, in order to walk. So she cannot stand on her own. It, an independent clause can. An independent clause can stand all on its own. It's just be a regular sentence. But a dependent clause needs something. It needs something to stand on. What does it need, you might ask? Here are some things it needs. I would recommend it. A little more about the dependent clauses. These are the things that a dependent clause needs to stand. Some of the things that can help out a dependent clause standing. You need, uh, a lot of times dependent clauses start out or begin with subordinate conjunctions. And we'll talk more about subordinate conjunctions in the future. Does everybody know what the word subordinate means? Does anybody know what the, Let me just put it this way. I wish that you were all subordinate to me. Every day. Every minute of every day. Cooperative, close. When something is subordinate, a lot of times you hear it in the military. You have lower level military people who are subordinate to their commanding officers. Anybody have an idea as to what it means now? They're well behaved, they're respectful, they listen, and what else? Participate. They participate, but only in a particular way. People who are subordinate <coughs> follow orders. They only do what they're told to do. So a subordinate conjunction tells a dependent clause what to do. And a dependent clause needs to be told what to do. Otherwise, they don't know what to do. And it's just, just sort of awkward. Dependent clauses cannot be complete sentences without being attached to an independent clause. That's very important. You have to attach it to an independent clause. You cannot attach two dependent clauses together and hope that they'll stand up. Not without an independent clause. So we couldn't take like a copy of my daughter who can't stand or walk on her own, and stick her with it, like with my daughter, so two of them together, would not be able to stand and walk on their own. They'd just keep tripping over each other and falling. They wouldn't be able to hold each other up. But you can stick my daughter with my son, and he can help her walk. And he does. He's a very nice boy. Sometimes. <laughs> when he's not stealing her stuff. Or poking her in there. <laughs> or pushing her down. <laughs> but when he's not doing all those evil things, he's really nice. He um he, he allows her. She likes to um she likes to she likes to you know, use his head to to push herself up, and she likes to hold on to his ear while he's trying to walk away. So that he can, she can walk with him. Um, and she likes to tackle him with kisses. Oh. Which is really funny because she hasn't really mastered that whole kiss thing, so basically she just opens her mouth and attacks you with a random slot. <laughs> um, which can be very dangerous for my son because she likes to just tackle him. What she's doing is But I say all this to, to reiterate the fact that you cannot have an independent, a, de a dependent clause without an independent clause. 
They have to go together. A dependent clause is not going to be able to stand alone without an independent clause. You have to have them together. Um, dependent clauses can act as different parts of speech. They can be nouns, adverbs, or adjectives. And we have a couple examples here. They can be nouns in the case of, I believe that you should go. <laughs> that you should go is an idea. Right? When we talk about nouns as being people, places, things, and ideas. The belief that you should go, in this case, that you should go, is a noun. It's a dependent clause as a noun. You can't just say that you should go. It requires something else. I believe that you should go. I think that you should go. It would be best that you should go. They can also be adverb clauses. After the game is an adverb clause. It talks about something else that's happening. It's added to something. After the game. After the game what? I ate ice cream. After the game, I ate ice cream. It modifies when you ate or what you ate. They can also be adjective clauses, so they modify under particular noun. The book that I read. The book that I read. You can't just say that I read. It doesn't stand alone. It doesn't make any sense. But you can use it to describe a book or magazine or comic book. The other thing about dependent clauses is they are occasionally called subordinate clauses. Things that are subordinate are often dependent. They rely on something else. So let's practice some. Let's see if we can tell the difference. Let's see if we can tell the difference. Here we have a list of different clauses. We have dependent clauses and independent clauses. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click on them, and you're going to need to move them from one area to the other. You're going to need to move them from the from here into whether you think they're dependent or independent. So. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to come up, click on it, read it out loud so everybody knows what it is, and then move it. Okay? Now, you want to grab the first one? Remember, click on it, read it out loud, tell me what it is, and then move it. Huh? Guys, I can't. I couldn't hear it. What was it again? Although I ate pizza. Although I ate pizza. Is that dependent or independent? Dependent, correct. It can't stand on, on, its, on its own. It's not its own sentence. Oh, uh, let's see here. Alia. Yeah. We danced until it was time to go. Is that independent or dependent? Independent, correct. It can be used all on its own. Yeah. Because I read hard yesterday. Yesterday. Alright, because I read hard yesterday, is that a dependent or independent clause? Oh, there's the why. <laughs> It's dependent, right? You can't just say because I ran hard yesterday. It needs something else to it. Uh, Lindsay. Quiet, please. What does it say? Who my father was. Is that independent or dependent? It's dependent. It cannot stand alone. You can't just say who my father was. Either. What are we 
we have? After we go to the library. After we go to the library, is that dependent or independent? Dependent, correct. You need something else added to it to tell you whether it's more about the sentence. Great. What was it? He ran out of money. He ran out of money. Is it an independent clause? You can say that sentence. It stands alone in a sentence. Maybe. Hey. Shopping is fun. Is that dependent or independent? Independent, correct. You can say shopping is fun. You can stand alone as its own sentence. Jack. What is it? It's like a little like, onion type thing. Oh, child. Like right, what else? I'm sorry, I guys, I can't hear. What was it again? I am so hungry. I am so hungry is independent. It can stand all on its own. Data. No, because I'm going in a particular order. Since you asked. Is dependent, right? You need doing more to it. Anybody who has not gone up still want to go? Who has not gone up? Kendall. You weren't there. It's not type You weren't there. Independent. You weren't there. It can stand alone as a sentence. Anybody else who has not gone want to go? Anybody who has not, who has not gone want to go? Brandon. Quiet down. Guys, I can't hear. What is it again? Even if I said so. It's not an independent. It is. Dependent, you need to add something to it so you know what you say. Even if I said so, what? Even if I said so. Anthony, go for everyone. Oh, 
Same as they ate. They may only have two words. You may not necessarily know what she spoke, but you may not need to. You just know that she did. We have two left. Two left. Anybody who had them gone that wants to grab one of these two? Skylar. When it is lunchtime, is that dependent or independent? Dependent, correct. You need something else. You need to add something to it in order to finish. Anybody who hasn't gone on this round that wants to go? Yeah. Well, did you go on this, on this round? Jack wants to go. Jack went. Yeah. 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 Mia, go grab one. What? I already went. Why not Kendall? Yeah. Oh, didn't. I just went. Thanks for noticing. Every party spot was taken. Is that independent or dependent? So we know the difference between the independent and dependent clauses. We know that independent clauses can stand on their own. They are their own thing. Dependent clauses cannot stand on their own. They are not their own thing. They need something added to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. How much time do we have? Five minutes. Five minutes. No, we're not watching. Okay. So I was. Are, how many of you guys are feeling like you got this down? Independent, dependent clauses. I got this down. So if we had a quiz, like right now, we'd all be okay. We'd be okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go get that quiz. Oh, no. Yeah. No. I don't know. We're not. We're gonna do a quiz. Um, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to talk over the next couple, over the next probably week and a half, we are going to talk about independent and dependent clauses. We're going to talk about phrases. We're going to break these down. And we've, we've gone over like the broad, generalized idea of what they are. But we're going to kind of go in and break them down and talk about all the different parts that make them up. So it makes it easier for us to identify them quickly. And we'll do that over the next couple of weeks. We'll probably have a couple of quizzes in there someplace over the different over different ones. And then we will finally have a test in probably, I think, two weeks over this. We will have a, a, a test over phrases and clauses. And then we will move on to talking about our next thing. But uh, after today, we should finish up the introduction to phrases and clauses. And we'll start working on uh, clauses themselves, or phrases. We'll start with phrases. And we'll probably start that tomorrow. Okay. Um, I have one more of these little games to play, and we have a couple more slides out here to talk about with phrases and clauses. But I don't want to hit in the middle of that um, and then have break and come back. So I will actually I will give you guys the, the last like three minutes, four minutes until break, uh, and then you guys and then we'll just turn right back on and we come back. And <laughs> No, we're gonna keep going. No, no, all my stuff. What's this? Oh, fire. That keeps annoying me. What? Whenever I sit there, I can always see that. I'm like, see what? That thing right here, and then it annoyed me. What? Like, me. Like, since the first day. The empty space? Like, just, no, this thing. Oh, that thing? Mr. Bittner, yeah. should I go take a test during break in the office? Take a test during break? How long of a test? Not very long. It's a social studies one that we study for a lot. Oh my gosh, that one. Go, to, go now. Go now? Yeah. What was that? What are these bubble things? Wait, can you put it in the bubble? Okay, awesome. What are these bubble things? Brandon broke the What? What are you leaving again? Um, well, we're just on the 1st, November 1st, but our flight's at night, so we're going to go there. Okay. So it's November 4th, so we're going to go down. Okay.
Yeah, I'm not planned to up that far yet. Um, yeah, in a couple weeks. No, just go.
by the beginning of this one when we're ready to go. Okay, I told you that we had one more of these little uh, these little activities to do, which we do, so I'm gonna pull that up. It's not this one, it's the next one. Now that we've kind of mastered independent and dependent clauses, let's, we're gonna go back and do a little bit of re review from what we did the other day, and now we need to be able to tell the difference between, between phrases and clauses. So we have another list of words. We need to figure out whether or not these are phrases or are they clauses. Who can tell me what, what the definition of a phrase is? What's the definition of a phrase? <laughs> a small group of words lacking either a subject, a predicate, or both. What's the definition of a clause? Kendall. A group of words having both a subject and a predicate. So phrases have sub may have subjects but not predicates. They might have predicates but not subjects. They might not have either one. But a clause is going to have both. So you need to look at these, come up and read them, and then decide where they go. And apparently these are only volunteer. Come up and grab one. Once again, click on it, read it out loud to everybody so we know which one it is, and then put it in the right one spot. Studying hard. Studying hard. <laughs> Studying hard is a phrase, right? It doesn't have a subject, it doesn't tell you who is studying hard. It doesn't tell you who is studying hard. Lindsay. The big purple dinosaur. The big purple dinosaur. It's not a clause. The big purple dinosaur has a subject but no predicate. So the big purple dinosaur is a phrase. There is no sub. There is no predicate in there. There's only a subject. There's no verb in there at all. Yeah. Just Quiet down. What one do we have? What are you picking? From my friend. From my friend. From my friend is a phrase. Does not have. <coughs> does not have a verb. Emily. That he would get good grades in school. That he would get good grades in school is a clause. It has a subject. And it has a predicate. It may not be a full sentence or even a great sentence, but it has a subject and a predicate. Grant. After the game. It's O. After the game is a clause. After the game is a clause. Uh, Alia. Because of the missing work. Oh, it is a phrase. We don't have a predicate in that sentence because of the missing work. Well, what about it? Uh, anybody else? 
Oh, your hands are gone off. Andrew, did I see your hand earlier? Did you want to go up earlier? You want to go grab one now? Go go. What prayers do you have? Day eight. Day eight. Day eight. Day eight is a clause. Day eight is a clause. Since you were there is a no, not a phrase. It has a subject and a predicate. It has you and were. Subject and verb. Last two, I think. Last two. Uh, Skylar, your other hasn't gone. And I, I saw the board and Mark hasn't gone there either. But we'll go with Skylar and Mark. She spoke. Clause. Correct. It is. It has a subject and a verb. Mark, you got the last one. Through the house. Oh, is that clause? Through the house. It's missing a verb. It doesn't tell you what went through the house or what happened in the house. Okay. 
We have another section. We have more to do. Whoa. Hey. No. If you remember, we talked about things as being these clauses and phrases are modifiers. And sometimes you can misplace or have a dangling modifier. A misplaced or dangling modifier is whenever you take one of these phrases or clauses and you put it into your sentence, and it's either in the pattern, throw it away. I'm trying it's just playing with stuff all day long. Just throw it away. Throw it away. It's garbage, go throw it away. The pencil is trashed, go throw it away. Whenever you misplace or dangle a modifier, it means when you have a misplaced modifier, it means that you put it in the wrong spot. You've taken a modifier, you've taken one of your phrases that modifies the sentence, and you've put it in the wrong spot so that it doesn't make sense or it makes things sound funny. When you have a dangling modifier, it sort of also means that it's unclear as to who the sentence or what the sentence is about. Who is it modifying? What is it modifying? It's unclear. It doesn't quite make sense. So it's a dangling modifier. So we have some really great examples of those. Now these are going to be hard for you guys to read, so I'm just going to read some of them to you. Well, at least that's my intention. Okay, so here are a couple of them. Oozing slowly across the floor, Marvin watched the salad dressing. Oozing slowly across the floor, Marvin watched the salad dressing. They took them out. What, what, is, what are they trying to talk? What are they trying to say here? How should this sentence be written in order for it to make sense? Yeah. That's a completely different sentence. You're just rewording this sentence, changing the words around so, so this sentence makes sense. Lindsay? Right, Marvin watched the salad dressing oozing slowly across the floor. That's what it should say. But because they misplaced the modifier oozing across the floor, it makes it sound like Marvin was oozing across the floor, doesn't it? Oozing slowly across the floor, Marvin watched the salad dressing. So as Marvin is oozing across the floor, he's staring at some salad dressing. Very interesting. Uh, waiting for the moon pie, the candy machine began to hum slowly. Or loudly, I'm sorry, loudly. Waiting for the moon pie, the candy machine began to hum loudly. Wait, who was waiting for the moon pie? I was. The candy machine was waiting for the moon pie? I mean, that's what I'm making. It does make it sound like that. Why would a candy machine be waiting for a moon pie? What's a moon pie? All right, uh, number three. Coming out of the market, the bananas fell on the pavement. Why were the bananas coming out of the market? Were they going home? When I was a when I was a uh, in high school, there was a kids TV show that was I was on like Nickelodeon or something like that. I don't remember what channel it was on because I didn't watch it because I was in high school. It was a little kids show, uh, but it was a very funny show that was very very popular, very similar to I don't know some other like SpongeBob. I guess it was meant for like kids, but everybody watched it. Uh, and it was called Bananas in Pajamas. I know and it was about these two bananas that wore blue and white striped pajamas, and they went on adventures. Well, Bananas in Pajamas. So when I first read this, sandwich, this sentence, coming out of the market, the bananas fell on the pavement, I imagined the bananas in pajamas walking out of a store and slipping and falling. But that's not what it's about, right? Yes, they have teddy bear friends. What? Number four, she handed out brownies to the children stored in Tupperware. What stored in Tupperware? The children. The children? Why are the children in the Tupperware? Because they're bad. Connor, why did you put the children in the Tupperware? They were bad. Uh, what is 
Number five. I smelled the oysters coming down the stairs for dinner. Wait, who was coming down the stairs for dinner? The oysters? The oysters? Yeah, no, other oysters. That doesn't seem right. Uh, let's see here. I brushed my teeth after eating with Crest toothpaste. What? So the other night I had a nice dinner date with Crest Toothpaste. <laughs> it was very good, but we ate a lot of onions and garlic, so I had to go home and brush my teeth. Crest Toothpaste, he was fine. He has a good breath all the time. Uh, number seven, grocery shopping at Big Star. The lettuce was fresh. Uh, let's do, we changed that saying, you could say grocery shopping at Jewel Osco. Uh, the lettuce was fresh. What? <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, number eight. This is one of my favorite ones. Number eight. Driving like a maniac, the deer was hit and killed. Oh my! Oh, why, why was the deer, deer driving like a maniac? Why did he get hit in the car? I want to know why the deer was driving like a maniac. Probably because he has hooves and not feet or hands. Makes it hard to shift. Uh, let's see here. With his tail held high, my father led his prize poodle around the arena. Uh, here's one of my other favorite ones. Um, I saw the dead dog driving down the interstate. Wow. Probably driving a pickup truck. Holding a bag of groceries, the roach fell out of the cabinet. The roach was holding a bag of Exactly. <laughs> that was like a pretty big uh, Number 12. Emitting thick black smoke from the midsection, I realized something was wrong. Really? I'm, I'm emitting thick black smoke from my midsection. That's not good. Number 13. The girl was consoled by the nurse who had just taken an overdose of sleeping pills. Why was the nurse taking what? an overdose of sleeping pills? That's not good. Number 14. I saw an accident walking down the street. What? There's an accident just walking down the street. I don't know anybody named that. What's up? Uh, number 15, drinking beer at a bar, the car would not start. Why was the car not, why was the car drinking beer at a bar? Number 16, playing pool in the living room, the radio was turned on by Jim. What? I'm not even sure what that means. Playing pool in the living room, the radio was turned on by Jim. What? I'm not sure what that means. Jim was playing the radio. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Jim the radio. While he was playing pool. Uh, maybe Jim was playing pool in the living room and then turned on the radio. I'm not sure. Uh, number 17. Frustrated by diagonal movement, the set was turned off. What? What? Apparently the set was frustrated by diagonal movement. Uh, number 18. Mrs. Daniel sews evening gowns just for special customers with sequins and stitches on them. <laughs> so if you're a customer who has sequins and stitches on you, you can get a special gown. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, number 19. Although exhausted and weary, although exhausted and weary, the coach kept yelling another lap. So the exhausted and weary coach kept yelling another lap. Why is he what? tired? He's not the one running. Uh, maybe it was she, maybe it's Coach Kirk. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I said. Number 19. Oh, I'm sorry, number 20. Number 20. She carefully studied the Picasso hanging in the art gallery with her friend. So her friend and the Picasso are both hanging in the art gallery. Number 21. Bye. Number 21, having an automatic stick shift, Nancy bought the car. Having an automatic stick shift, Nancy bought the car. Not really sure. She has an automatic stick shift. Uh, number 22, freshly painted, Jim left the room to dry. Why is Jim painted? Jim was freshly painted, so he left the room so he could drive. Why did Jim just drag out the stairs? Number 23. 
He held the umbrella over Janet's head that he got from Delta Airlines. Janet's head? He, he got, got Delta, 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 Janet's head from Delta yeah. Airlines. Yeah. 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 Delta Airlines doesn't anything. They don't give out peanuts anymore. They're handing out Janet's head. <laughs> that when you go flying with them. Uh, two more. He wore a straw. He wore a straw hat on his head, which was obviously too small. Okay. His head was too small for that. Obviously. And finally, uh, one of my favorites. After drinking too much, the toilet kept moving. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the toilet was drinking too much and just wouldn't stop moving around. <laughs> stop moving, toilet. <laughs> You've had too much coffee, toilet. Stop moving. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've heard a number of them and we've, we've seen what it's like to have them in the wrong spot, uh, we're going to try this on our own. We're going to actually see if we can purposely create some dangling modifiers in misplaced. So this is what you need to do. You're not going to do this in groups. You're doing this by yourself. You're going to take less than 10 minutes, actually. And you're going to write three sentences with either misplaced or dangling modifiers. So you're going to need to write a sentence that should have... They should say one thing, but it's not going to make quite sense, quite the right amount of sense, because your modifier or your is going to be either misplaced or dangling, which means it's either going to not be clear who you're talking about, or you're going to be talking about the wrong thing. So uh, I'm going to give you about <coughs> six minutes to do that. Here go. Three sentences. Yes. Oh, my God. Create some good ones. I'm going to give you guys a chance to share them afterwards. Create some good ones. Yes, please. The clicking should stop since you're supposed to be writing, not clicking. Thank you. 
Put it in the wrong spot so it makes it doesn't quite make sense. Oh. So you're not sure, like on the examples, you're not necessarily sure like you know what it's talking about because your modifier is in the wrong spot. You don't know what it's modifying. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody come up with one they want to share? Skylar. The dog was chasing me on my motorcycle. The dog was chasing me on my motorcycle. <laughs> okay, I can see that one. Not necessarily makes sense. It's not quite clear who's on the motorcycle. The dog was chasing me on my motorcycle. To make it even a little bit more confusing, you say, on my motorcycle, the dog was chasing me. Right? So if you move the position around, it becomes really confusing. On my motorcycle, my dog was chasing me. Anyone else have one? A little bit? Anybody else have one they want to share? Nothing? You guys want to see some more examples? Yes. Yes. This is really confusing. It is. It's really hard to write something incorrectly. Oh, yeah. But more importantly, easy to understand. Let's join Jean Luc as he is trying to write a fascinating story. The skateboarder hit the lamppost. As you can see, this sentence doesn't give the reader enough information. How did the skater hit the lamppost? What we need is a modifier to clarify what just happened. Zooming down the sidewalk, the skateboarder hit the lamppost. sidewalk serves as a modifier in this sentence. However, when modifiers are displaced, disaster is sure to follow. Chasing an acorn, Melody saw a squirrel. The modifier chasing an acorn is included, but it still isn't clear to the reader because we don't know who was chasing the acorn. <laughs> Did you 
Yes. Melody saw a squirrel chasing an acorn. So now that this modifier has been put in the correct place, this sentence makes sense. It's not a bad video. The video is fine. It's because but now it's, it's because it's our story. It's our internet. It's not the video. Tackling on the field, Melody watched her friend's football game. Once again. So, do you see what no. what's? What's weird on the, on this sentence? Tackling on the field, Melody watched her friend's football game. What does this sound like is happening? She's Justin. Tackling, she's tackling. Right, it sounds like she's tackling people while watching the football game, right? In the first one we had, while chasing an acorn, or chasing an acorn, Melody saw a squirrel. And what sounds like Melody was doing what? Chasing an acorn. Melody was chasing an acorn, and then saw a squirrel, which is what we saw in the video. Yes, I know that he has a dangling zombies. modifier. Who is tackling on the field? <laughs> Melody watched her friends tackle on the field during their football game. Sean Luke's story is starting to make a lot more sense. Sitting in the back of the classroom, the clock was hard for Melody to see. Just when we think we're starting to understand this story, we see another dangling modifier. What is sitting in the back of the classroom? Obviously, it does not make sense for the clock to be sitting in the back of the classroom. The clock was hard for Melody to see because she was sitting in the back of the classroom. Jean-Luc and Melody walked past the lion Teeth bear. Jean Luc and Melody walked past the lion whose teeth were bared. They had their teeth bared. Because they walked past the lion with teeth bared, so they walked along the line. Jean Luc is starting to get the hang of this. Whenever we don't know what the modifier is referring to, we need to edit the sentence so it will make more sense for our reader. The end. Okay. So this is our this is our last thing, this is our active thing. We are not moving on from this. We are gonna go back to this. We are not moving on to this to do our last thing unless we can answer these three questions. We're gonna have three questions that we need to know. What is the difference between a phrase and a clause? Can somebody tell me the difference between a phrase and a clause? What is the difference? That way, what's the difference? What's the difference between a phrase and a clause? A phrase has, doesn't have a subject or a predicate, and you don't have a clause, it's your clause has one. Correct. A phrase has neither, either a, does not have a subject or a predicate, or it doesn't have both. But a clause has both. A clause has both. Okay, what is the difference between an independent and a dependent clause? What is the difference between an independent and a dependent clause, Connor? What is the difference between an independent and a dependent clause? A dependent clause needs help from its friends, and an independent clause can stand alone as a sentence. Correct. An independent clause can stand alone as a sentence. A dependent clause needs help from its friends. <coughs>
What does it mean for a modifier to be dangling or misplaced? What does that mean? Manali? You don't know who is doing that. You don't know who is being modified. You don't know who or what is being modified. What, we don't know what the modifier is talking about. Okay. All right. Tomorrow we're going to get a little bit more in depth. We're going to start taking a look at specific ones. All right. Which leaves us with about four minutes left today. If it doesn't play again, because <laughs> when I first when I first started watching it, it only had like three, three million three million views. It's up to twenty million now. And it was only posted on the video. Why is it chopped? The video is going to be chopped. Dog goes woo, cat goes meow, bird goes tweet, and mouse goes squeak. Cow goes moo, frog goes crow, and the elephant goes toot. Ducks say quack, and fish go blub, and the seal goes ow, ow, ow. But there's one sound that no one knows. What does the fox say? <laughs>
that's, that's uh, what the fox says. So for everybody who's been asking me to finally to see that video in this class, I have showed it in my world history classes because it's the um, it's our. I haven't, I haven't shown it in a second. No. Really? No, really. Oh, no. all right. I'll show it in a second. Oh, wait. It's Friday. 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 We'll show it in a second. First hour. But for the, um, for those of you who don't know, um, the Native World History Day is the first day of school. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right behind me. Awesome. All right. So let's do. So like, let's say you did a Google image search and you came up with this image right here, right? You click on the image and bring up this little thing right here. This will tell you a couple of different things. It'll tell you the title, the name of the modifier, the grammar, the for the or something. It also tell you the URL so you can get that right here. But if you click where it says main page, it will take you to like where it's actually located. And so you can get um, you can get what the title of the picture is. Um, right down here, um, this actually tells you a little bit more about, uh, about the picture. Um, it tells you you can get the URL from here. Um, any other, I think that's, I think really those are the only pieces of information you need other than the tag here and artist, but I don't see if you put artist in the picture anywhere, so you don't need to put that. I don't know URL and then probably then what you use to find it. Which is Google Images. So if you use Google Images, Google Images, um, under the like, database, if it asks for a database, um, you can put it under there. Okay? Thank you. 